5 p.m. recap. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Today is Monday, April 12, 2021. BBC Report. Minneapolis. Dante Wright shooting by police, accidental. Dante Wright, 20, was shot after the officer meant to use a taser, but mistakenly drew her gun instead, Chief Tim Gannon told reporters. Mr. Wright's death has sparked angry protests and an overnight curfew. Tensions in nearby Minneapolis are high as the trial of an ex-officer accused of killing George Floyd continues. In a courtroom just 10 miles, 16 kilometers, from the latest unrest. Proceedings resumed on Monday, with Derek Chauvin's lawyers set to begin his defense. Deutsche Well report. Germany. CDU's Armin Lachette reportedly has majority support for chancellor candidacy. Germany's Christian Democratic Union, CDU, support the party's current leader, Armin Lachette, to stand as candidate for chancellor in national elections set for September. According to several German media reports on Monday following a CDU meeting in Berlin, Hess state premier Volker Bouffier told Germany's DPA news agency that Lachette has the support of the majority of leading CDU members. Other unnamed party sources said Lachette would be chosen based on his ability to bring opinions together, to develop a stance and to represent it consistently. Deutsche Well report. Coronavirus. England relaxes restrictions, pubs and businesses reopen. England's partial reopening of pubs and restaurants on Monday marked the latest easing of coronavirus restrictions. People across England took advantage of new rules allowing pubs and restaurants to serve drinks and food outside. Many people braved cold temperatures and raised a glass just after midnight when pubs were allowed to open. Prime Minister Boris Johnson said people must still behave responsibly. Despite pub reopenings the relaxing of measures was welcomed by the hard-hit hospitality industry after repeated closures. Deutsche Well report. Cyclone Cerro Jaw wreaks havoc along western Australia coast. Tropical cyclone Cerro Jaw hit the western Australia state coast with winds gusting up to 170 km per hour, 105 miles per hour, overnight. Officials said on Monday. The tourist town of Kalbari was especially hard hit by the storm. Power lines and trees were toppled. Homes lost roofs and streets were strewn with debris. Prime Minister Scott Morrison said the Commonwealth Disaster Response Plan had been activated and his government stood ready to provide assistance. CNN report. Yes, the IRS can tax Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. What you need to know. Even though you can buy things with Bitcoin. It's not the same as cash. At least not in the eyes of the IRS. Virtual currencies are taxed as property, or as an investment, when you sell them. And using them to buy something counts as selling. If you're paid in Bitcoin, for instance, that will be treated as taxable income to you. That means almost every transaction may be taxable and should be reported. CNN report. A shooter is on the run in Paris after killing one and injuring another outside a hospital. One person was killed and another injured after a shooting in front of a private hospital in Paris on Monday, a police source told CNN. The source said that the attacker fled the scene outside the Henry Dunant Hospital, in the 16th arrondissement of the French capital, using a two-wheeled vehicle. The geriatric hospital, located in an affluent neighborhood, is run by the French Red Cross and it currently serves as a COVID-19 vaccination center. Fox report. Tiger mom. Amy Chua denies allegations of inappropriate parties, slams disrespect and lack of due process. Amy Chua denied recent allegations laid out against her by an independent student newspaper. The law school professor, famously known as Tiger mom also stated that she couldn't imagine that any other member of the faculty would be treated the way she had been in response to the allegations. According to the report in the student-run news outlet, Chua had been accused of having private dinner parties at her home despite a previous agreement to cease such actions. Fox report. Skilled predator, FBI boss harassed eight women, watchdog finds. One woman carried a ruler at FBI headquarters so she could smack James Hendricks' hands when he reached for her legs and breasts. Another went home shaken after he tugged on her ear and kissed her cheek during a closed-door meeting. And when Hendricks went on to lead the FBI's field office in Albany, New York, in 2018, 
Colleagues described him as a skilled predator, who leered at women in the workplace, touched them inappropriately and asked one to have sex in a conference room. According to a newly released federal report obtained by the Associated Press, CNN report. Mysterious blackout in Iran threatens to undermine nuclear talks. Iran's foreign minister Javad Zarif has vowed revenge against Israel after an apparent attack on an Iranian nuclear site caused a blackout at the facility over the weekend. The incident threatens to undermine recently revived diplomatic efforts between Washington and Tehran to revive the 2015 nuclear deal. Newly inaugurated centrifuges at Iran's Natanz facility, a centerpiece of the country's contentious nuclear program appeared to have been badly damaged in Sunday's incident, which Tehran has described as an act of nuclear terrorism. Al Jazeera report. Philippines. Duterte reappears in public after ill health rumors. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte has reappeared in public on Monday after an absence of nearly two weeks, which had fueled concerns about his health that the government insists are unfounded. The Philippines is battling one of the worst coronavirus outbreaks in Asia, with hospitals in the capital Manila overwhelmed amid record daily infections, while authorities face delays in delivery of COVID-19 vaccines. Fox report. Iran intel tries luring Israelis with fake Instagram accounts, investigators say. Israeli spy agencies Mossad and Shin Bet have uncovered an attempt by the Iranians to lure Israeli men. According to a statement released Monday, Iranian intelligence has contacted dozens of Israeli men via fake Instagram accounts, drawing them to meet women all over the world hoping to kidnap them. According to security sources, one meeting was foiled at the last minute after the person already left Israel to meet the alleged woman. BBC Report. Nevskaya Manufactura. Fire destroys historic factory in St. Petersburg. The fire started at about half past 12 local time, 09.30 GMT, on Monday, and quickly spread to all six floors of the Nevskaya Manufactura building. Strong winds hampered efforts to put out the flames, with a huge plume of black smoke visible across the city. The building dates back to 1841, when it was used to manufacture fabric, and is an iconic landmark in St. Petersburg. Forty people were evacuated and much of the roof and floor deck had collapsed, the Russian Emergencies Ministry said. Al Jazeera report. U.S. budget deficit this year nearly doubles previous record. The United States government's budget deficit surged to an all-time high of $1.7 trillion for the first six months of this budget year, nearly double the previous record, as another round of economic support checks added billions of dollars to spending last month. In its monthly budget report, the U.S. Department of the Treasury said Monday that the deficit for the first half of the budget year, from October through March, was up from a shortfall of $743. Al Jazeera report. Israel arrests Hamas members in West Bank raids. Israeli forces arrested 25 Palestinians in overnight raids across the occupied West Bank, the Palestinian Prisoner Society, PPS, said on Monday. Among those detained were prominent members of the Hamas movement and former prisoner Mona Kadan. Speaking to Anadolu agency, Mahmoud Kadan, Mona's brother, said Israeli forces raided his sister's house at dawn in the town of Araba and took her into custody. Fox report. Huge, explosion rocks street. Vincent as volcano keeps erupting. La Sofriere volcano fired an enormous amount of ash and hot gas early Monday in the biggest explosive eruption yet since volcanic activity began on the eastern Caribbean island of St. Vincent late last week, with officials worried about the lives of those who have refused to evacuate. Experts called it a huge explosion that generated pyroclastic flows down the volcano's south and southwest flanks. CNN report. Biden wants to make the U.S. more competitive. His tax hikes will do the opposite. Garrett Watson is a senior policy analyst at the Tax Foundation. Erica York is an economist at the Tax Foundation in Washington, D.C. The opinions expressed in this commentary are their own. At the core of the $2 trillion package as a paradox, infrastructure projects are designed to make the United States more competitive, but they will be paired with corporate tax increases that will do just the opposite. BBC report. France moves to ban short-haul domestic flights. 
Over the weekend, lawmakers voted in favor of a bill to end routes where the same journey could be made by train in under two and a half hours. Connecting flights will not be affected, however. The planned measures will face a further vote in the Senate before becoming law. Airlines around the world have been severely impacted by the coronavirus pandemic, with website Flight Radar 24 reporting that the number of flights last year were down almost 42% from 2019. Thank you for watching 5 p.m. recap. To be notified, you can subscribe our channel and activate the bell.